Welcome, in this video I'm going to go over the process of setting up USB boot on a Raspberry Pi 4. And in this process you'll need a micro SD card, but once you set it up you won't need the micro SD card anymore. I do have another process where you actually use a micro USB card for a bootloader and I'll put a link below to that video. So the Raspberry Pi I'm using is a Raspberray Pi 4 4 GB model. And I'll put a link below in the description to that on Amazon. And if you use that link it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. And then the flash drive I'm using is a Samsung VAR Plus USB 3.1 flash drive, 128 gigabytes. And I'll put a link below to that too. So the Raspberry Pi is only USB 3.0 and this is a 3.1 flash drive, but this will still work in it. So to get started, you'll want to go to the Raspberry Pi website and click on Downloads. And then you want to download the Raspberry Pi Imager for Windows, Mac, or Ubuntu, depending on the system you're using. I've downloaded the Mac version. And if you scroll down, it says Raspberry Pi OS, so I'll click on that. I'll scroll down, and then you want to download the version you want. So I've downloaded the full version, and I'll be using that, but you could do this on the regular desktop version, and I think it should also work on the light version too. And this is the release from August 20, 2020, so you want the latest release. So I have those downloaded. I'll go into my Raspberry Pi Imager. I'll go down here to Choose OS. I'll scroll down, and I'll choose Use Custom. And I have a folder here with a bunch of different images on it, so I'll choose the full version, I'll hit open, and then I'll choose SD card, and I'll insert my micro SD card. I'm using a Samsung Pro Plus. You could use any card pretty much. I think it needs to be eight gigabytes maybe. So the card came up here, I'll click on that, and then I'll hit write. It'll ask me for my password, so I'll enter that in. I'll hit okay. And now it will write the image to the micro SD card. Okay, that's completed, so I'll hit continue here. I'll take the card out, I'll put in my Raspberry Pi, and I'll boot it. Okay, we're all booted up here. I just changed the resolution to make everything a little bigger on the screen. So I'll go through this setup real quick. I'll hit next. I'll choose United States, English, time zone is Chicago. I'll check use English language and US keyboard. I'll hit next. I'll leave the password as is for now. I do have the black border, so I'll check this. I'll hit next. I'll skip wireless setup. I'll skip updating the software right now. I'll hit next. Okay, so the setup is complete. Now I'll restart it. Okay, so we're booted back up. I'll open up the terminal. And in here, I'll type sudo space app space update, and I'll hit enter. And I'll put a link below to my website where I'll have these commands I'm typing in. Next, I'll type sudo space app space full dash upgrade. I'll say yes to upgrade all of this. Okay, so that's finished. So I don't know if it's necessary, but I'm going to just reboot this real quick. I'll just type sudo reboot, I'll hit enter. Okay, that's finished booting, so I'll reopen up the terminal. And now to enable USB boot, I'll type sudo space rpi dash eeprom dash update space dash a, and that will enable USB boot. And I'll do space dash d, and that will set the boot to the defaults, and I'll hit enter. So I've already run this on here, but it'll do essentially the same thing, and it'll update it if it's not already up to date. So you can test to see if it's set up now by just typing vcgen cmd space bootloader underscore config, and I'll hit enter. And if it's set to boot from USB, down here under boot orders, you'll see 0xf41. So the 4 here represents USB boot, and the 1 represents SD card boot. So it will start with the SD card boot. If it doesn't see an SD card, then it will try the USB boot. So now that we have USB boot enabled, I'll exit out of this. So now I'm going to plug in the flash drive. I'll go up here to the menu. I'll go down here to accessories, and I'll go to SD card copier. This little pop-up came up, I can just cancel this. And this says SD card copier, but it also works with flash drives. I want to copy from device, and I want to copy from this MMC BLK0, and that's the SD card. And I want to copy to the device the Samsung flash drive. And then I'll check new partition UUIDs here. 
And you want to check that, especially if you would potentially have both of these drives in at the same time. So I'll hit start and this will copy everything from the micro SD card onto the flash drive. Okay, the copy is complete, so I'll hit okay. I'll close this. Now I'm going to shut it down and then I'm going to remove the micro SD card and I'll turn it back on with just the USB flash drive plugged in. And I forgot to mention earlier that you should plug it into the blue ports. So on the Raspberry Pi, you'll have ports that have black in them and then some that have blue. And the blue are the USB 3.0 ports. You want to plug it into there to get the full speed. Okay, so I'll shut it down and I'll come back booted from the USB drive. Okay, so we're booted up here. I can open up a web browser or do whatever I want with this. So the reason you might want to boot from USB over microSD is that it can be quite a bit faster, especially with a USB 3.0 drive. Some reasons you might not want to is if you don't need the absolute performance, just using a microSD card gives you a slimmer profile, you don't have something sticking out of it, and microSD cards can be had for super cheap too. So I'm going to shut this down and then I'm going to insert another USB 3.0 drive. It's a 32 gig drive and I put the Raspberry OS Lite on it. And it's a new image, but this should boot from it because we set the Raspberry Pi up to boot from USB now. Okay, so now I'm booted up on the Raspberry Pi OS Lite. So if you have multiple Raspberry Pi 4s, you could take that micro SD card and stick it into each one and update the EEPROM on it and then make each one compatible with USB booting. So there could be some compatibility issues with some USB flash drives. So I would definitely test this out before you put it into like a production environment. And as always, you should have backups of important data. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.